There's been some major jockeying for position among Republican presidential candidates. Trump is still dominant in the party, but Ron DeSantis is laying in wait. Elon Musk stirred things up when he said he'd vote for DeSantis if he ran against Biden in 2024. Trump didn't like that, and he's been going after him ever since. Elon is not going to buy Twitter. Where did you hear that before? From me. From a fake account. She says fake. A lot of them. Nah, he's got himself a mess. You know, he said the other day, oh, I've never voted for a Republican. I said, I didn't know that. He told me he voted for me. <laughs> so he's another bull <laughs> artist. Elon explained later, I don't hate the man, but it's time for Trump to hang up his hat and sail into the sunset. Dems should also call off the attack. Don't make it so that Trump's only way to survive is to regain the presidency. He also said Trump was, quote, too much drama. Do we really want a bull in a China shop situation every single day? We all know there is no way Trump was going to let that go. He said this, quote, when Elon Musk came to the White House asking me for help on all the, his many subsidized projects, whether it's electric cars that don't drive long enough, driverless cars that crash, or rocket ships to nowhere, without which subsidies he'd be worthless, and telling me how he was a big Trump fan and Republican, I could have said, drop to your knees and beg, and he would have done it. Ouch. But on the other side of the aisle, very interesting development while Joe Biden's overseas. Our cameras caught Gavin Newsom sliding through the back entrance into the White House today. How you feeling? Did you fly in yesterday? We did, yeah. You bounce around? Yeah. <laughs> How's this look? I'll see you in a bit. Okay. Thanks. Okay. What's going on here? Who was he going to meet? Was he going to talk to Jill about tacos? Was he going to talk to Kamala? We don't know. We know who you're going to talk to now, Senator Lindsey Graham, a House Judiciary <laughs> Committee member. Now, let's start with the Trump Elon thing. You are primetime's Trump whisperer. You will uh, <laughs> interpret what's going on for us in Trump world. Tell me what's going on with this Musk situation. Well, I think Elon Musk, uh, you know, basically declared Trump dead politically. And, you know, I like Elon fine. But let me just say this. Uh, DeSantos has been a great governor, but this is Trump's party. And Elon Musk will not pick the nominee for the Republican Party in 2024. Republicans will do that. And I like Trump's chances. In South Carolina, Trump would win going away if he ran again. So you don't see any threat from DeSantis if Trump seeks the nomination, it's his, he owns it, it's done. Well, I, you, you never say that in politics. I like Ron DeSantis, but I know what I'm getting with Trump, the good and the bad and everything in between. Uh, Trump sounds pretty good to me right now. Look, you know, Gavin Newsom may be the only guy that Biden's willing to deport. <laughs> look, 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 look at what's going on at the border. You know, Biden's in the Mideast. Uh, compare Biden to Trump when it comes to the Mideast. You know, Biden's begging the Iranians to get back in a deal that's terrible for the Israelis and the Arabs. Uh, Biden is going to go to East Jerusalem to undercut the Trump policy of making Jerusalem the undivided capital of Israel. I've never seen a president tour the Mideast in a more weakened condition uh, than President Biden. And I say that was sadness. Trump looks pretty damn good to me when you look at the issues we're facing as a nation and as a world. Okay, so he's touring the Mideast. He's probably not going to bow to the Saudi king. He's maybe fist bump because he doesn't want to <laughs> shake hands and catch anything. But right. do you think he's even aware that his stalking horse, Gavin Newsom, is inside the White House measuring the drapes while he's away? I don't know. I mean, I don't want to say what he's aware of and what's not. That's a very complicated situation. But I will say this, uh, that the Democratic Party uh, in large numbers wants to move on from Biden. The Republican Party substantially supports President Trump. So everybody talks about the Trump effect on 2022. If you're a Democrat and somebody said to you running in 2022, uh, Biden is here to help you jump out the window. <laughs> no one wants him in their district, that's for right. sure. Will Trump right. be going around the country to, to help Republicans turn out for the midterms? 
Yeah, see, I talked to the president a couple of days ago. He's really sort of heartbroken about what's going on with the country. Uh, he's very much invested in making sure we win the House and the Senate in 2022. And all I can say to the president, and he watches your show pretty routinely, if you'll talk about what you did as president and compare it to what Biden is doing now, I think people are going to appreciate you now more than ever. And Ron DeSantos is a great guy, been a great governor, but it was Donald Trump who destroyed ISIS, who killed Soleimani, who secured the border. Nobody else. And he did it once. He can do it again. So I think he'd be very actively involved in the 2022 cycle. And I think that'd be a benefit to Republicans. All right, Lindsey Graham, the Trump whisperer. Thanks for coming <laughs> Thanks. on Prime Time. Thank you. <laughs> All right. <laughs> hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.